16 seasons and Al Kellogg is laying down the law. Andy Nicholl is a leader of men, there are a few better. No, he's an iconic figure at Glasgow and uh, I think uh, even though there's a lot of injuries, I think Gregor Townsend might well have brought Al Kellogg back in for this game because this needs strong leadership here at the rec. They know what's at stake and they know what, uh, I, th I think they know what they need to do. It should be a thrilling match. The referee is Johnny Lacey. He's assisted by Sean Gallagher and Ollie Hodges. The television match official is Marshall Kilgore. And there's Gregor Townsend, who's been masterminding this Glasgow campaign. Really good opportunity for his developing team. It has to be said they are a little underpowered today. We've mentioned the absentees, especially in the back row. But their confidence is high. Their belief is strong. And of course, Bath looking to recreate the magic from France last week. That performance in Toulouse, really special. A result to hang your hat on. We'll need to back it up here today. Finn Russell gets us underway. Young man making big strides, but that is not the best of starts, David Pratt. And you know, I never, I never quite know how I feel about uh, these switch kickoffs. It's firstly. Whichever way it went, it was too long and it's given Bath the advantage of putting on the centre spot, which the front row, the front five will certainly be very happy with, get themselves into the game. Never quite know about these split kickoffs. Teams cover them so well. I just wonder if you're not better off doing something a bit more orthodox and giving yourself a proper opportunity to win that ball back. Well, he's young, just 22. And as Andy was telling us pre kickoff. Guys, what are we yes! for? a year ago hadn't done an awful lot but subsequently been capped by Scotland he is the Scottish number 10 given the absentees at the moment Duncan Weir and Rory Jackson both out of commission awful lot resting on Finn Russell that's the first scrummage of the game there's some heavyweight meetings but Mark have secured the first penalty of the match I think there's, uh, if that had come a second or half a second earlier, that collapse is a good chance that would have been reset, but Bar certainly had the nudge on. And if you're moving forward, you're just, you're just a million times more likely to get decision. Bath, again, very happy with this first minute or so. It's not a great start for Glasgow. All the plans that they would have set out to get the kick-off, get in a good position in the field, it goes out in the full, and then first scrum, it's a penalty. And all that's done is give Bath fantastic field position now in the 22. George Ford has put them right where they would like to be. Six, six. Now an opportunity for Rob Webber to find his jumpers and launch the first meaningful attack of the match. It's playing by Hooper. Brought back into the starting 15 this week, having sat on the bench in France, inspired the victory, some said, with his talk pre-match. Chris Cook looking for it. At the back to Eastman, but Glasgow very quickly up onto it. Francois Lowe trying to keep the ball alive. Forward to Watson, just a little bit disjointed, and that's credit to the Glasgow defence. Turnover, Scott. Turnover ball for the Scots, and here goes Maitland. Of course, heading to London Iris next season. They'll be looking for those kind of breaks. Slips off the tackle of Eastman. Fergos over the head of Chris Cook, right taken calmly. Watson has seen some space. Backwards. Mark, of course, become well known for this fast paced offloading game, but if they're not accurate and clinical with it, Glasgow will pounce. Carl Eastman, by the way, is um, still down. And Nursing what looks like ankle trouble as the ball is cleared away. Really, really strong defence from Glasgow. Yes, Bath are known, as you're right, Ali, for their high-paced offloading game, but so are Glasgow. What they're also known for is being feverish in defence. And when errors come, which they did from Bath, they're electric. They love it. They pounce on it. There's no tuck me jumper stuff from Glasgow. They're piling through really, really good defences. Kyle Eastman missed that tackle on Maitland. Looks like he might have landed awkwardly. He saw him wince as he landed. Yeah, I saw him bent over a few moments ago and he, he seems to be clutching his ankle but the um, it's definitely the shoulder or that arm that's causing the trouble it does seem a pick up a lot of injuries doesn't he Kyle Eastman maybe he plays a lot of games plays a lot of minutes 
Yeah, it's a physical game, the, uh, isn't it, these days? Rough old game. Yeah, back into the uh, defensive line. And, uh, looking to exploit the open spaces. This is brilliant from Glasgow. And Dunbar has struck. Just fantastic, really, really simple stuff with Van der Merwe coming off the inside of Russell. Really had to be covered. Chris Cook almost got there. Fingertip stuff, didn't make the tackle. Powerful, simple stuff from Glasgow. Scoring from first phase. This is classic, very often. classic Glasgow Warriors. They attack that channel just outside with the, with the blind side winger. It was a great inter intervention by Van der Merwe. Here it is off Henry Purgis. There's DTH Van der Merwe calling for inside. And then it's just support lines for Alex Dunbar. Great offload from Van der Merwe. After a poor start from the kickoff and then the first scrum. My goodness, Glasgow Warriors have turned it around. That's absolutely got to be something they've looked at and analysed and thought Bath are not sharp enough off the back of the line out because they've gone straight there the first chance they've got Chris Cook knows what his job is he bounces off one man can't make it to the inside runner Bed that nicely between the posts, and that is just about the ideal start for Gregor Townsend's man, Alex Dunbar, the try scorer. And it was really quite simply executed, but it was clinical and ruthless. So Oli Devoto waiting here, and that is a consequence of the Eastman injury. I think Eastman's jogged across to say actually he's he's all right. Keen to stay on, but of course that axis, that midfield axis, has been terrorising defences up and down the land in the Premiership and in Europe this season. The forward Eastman Joseph combination. But uh, Devoto is coming on. Eastman doesn't look terribly happy to be replaced, although he's kind of still holding that that left arm of his. Yeah, I think uh, nine times out of ten, if you ask an injured player if he can carry on, he says yes. So it's quite a good idea to take that decision out of their hands, and I think the doc's done just that. Montpellier leading to lose by three points to nil, and of course there is uh, an opportunity there for either of these these two to profit from um, a Toulouse defeat in Montpellier. They've won their first four matches to accrue their 16 points in this pool, but. They could have won all their, their four matches and still not qualify. Kyle Eastman doesn't look happy at all, does he? Of their concern, not just for Mike Ford, but also for the England coaching staff with the Six Nations looming. Let's go in possession. Togos on the loop and Russell exploiting the space inside the 22. Bennett out to Maitland. Houston chasing back. Oh, that's a fumble that could prove costly. Taken in by Bennett. Going from 22 to 22. Fabulous pick up from Fraser Brown. He's the man who's been playing a lot at, at the hooker, most normally recognised as a hooker. He's on the open side today. MacArthur crashes it up. Russell searching for the space. To the short side and Fraser Brown again. Gordon Reed taking care of that ball with Bath waiting to snaffle it. Nakarawa wrapped up and driven back. John Day with the hit. MacArthur. Glasgow having absolutely all of this match so far. Keeping it tight and driving it close to the fringes. Van der Mer, that hat trick man last week against Montpellier. Burgos, the inside ball, and it's going forwards. Well, it's an individual error, an unusual individual error from Leroy Houston. Did a huge amount of work to get across and cover that kick, but it was an eye off the ball moment. Devoto struggling, good, gets across, makes the tackle. Joseph slips, Maitland puts a pretty run of the mill kick through. Houston's in exactly the right place, just takes his eye off the ball. Just there. Just there. So simple. 
just thinking about what's yeah. going to happen next. Rob Webber coming up with a big hit as well as Dom Day a couple of phases ago. Glasgow look well organised, got themselves in a great position and Van der Moe looks threatening, doesn't he? Looks well, powerful. Stable after the after set. Stable. Real firepower out wide for the Warriors. I like to stand them over and see more Maitland, of course, at fullback. There's the tool as it stands, of course, with just the 71 minutes of the match remaining. That's going for what it's worth at the moment on top. Not so in this scrum. And there's the blast from John Lacey. Yeah, we saw Paul James take a good couple of inches out of Cusack then on the engagement. Held himself back until that ball came in and marched it forward. Didn't look, frankly, didn't look too difficult for him. But that's two scrum, two scrum penalties now for Bath. Glasgow won't be worried yet, but that was an important bit of field position. They've given away. Here comes Paul James, just gets the drive on. He takes his side up, but you see him stop now. And he tries to pull Davy Wilson and Rob Webber through and say, come on, boys, let's keep marching. Doesn't want to spin it any further. But that's powerful stuff from the Welshman. Uh, happy, with, happy with that, with Seth. James, Seth. of course, the, the captain in France a week ago with Stick. Hooper on the bench. This is decent line out ball. Chris Cook has stuck it straight into touch. That's a shame. He'll be kicking himself, but I think Stuart Hooper won't be too happy about that. That was a wonderful throw, wonderful piece of line out ball. Straight off the back in prime position. Okay. That's a big let off yeah. for Glasgow. That's giving them really good attacking field position. Pat MacArthur in the scars of battle. Yeah, yeah, no. Line has been functioning very nicely for the Warriors this season as Russell pops it onwards to Dunbar, the try scorer. Vaughan to Russell again. Maitland threat. Joseph defensively holding up. Brown driven backwards by Dom Day. Bennett has got really nifty footwork, Mark Bennett. They've missed him over the last couple of weeks, but he provides real sparkle in the midfield. Dunbar the thrust. Russell again. Out of the back from Maitland. Awful lot of possession here for the Scotsman. Dearly love some more points for their pressure. MacArthur. Third visit to the 22. And they've been robbed of the ball and Joseph has it. That was fantastic from Jonathan Joseph. What a bit of power. So much talk about Jonathan Joseph, that wonder try he scored last week, but defensively he's tough. And Bath have done enough at the breakdown to secure the penalty from a, a perilous position not so long ago. Deep inside their own. Just watched it, Jonathan Joseph, Nakarara, massive unit. 22 about to Davy Wilson's done the bulk of the tackling there, but Joseph's engaged hard, ripped that ball out. Really good aggressive work, he knows where the space is. You look at here, Alex Dunbar just saw it was George Ford in front of him. He thought he was going to take them on, a bit of a mismatch in space, but all he did was actually attack where all the Bath defenders were. Glasgow didn't have anyone back there to help him. Not great um, kick chase and, and recovery for Glasgow. They'll be very disappointed. Look at the territory they've just lost. Great bit of steal there from Joseph. Sean, just tell Ali what I told you. Well, given the way Luther Burrell played yesterday, a lot of talk surrounding that England centre pairing for the opening match against the Welsh in Cardiff. In a couple of weeks' time, George Ford will no doubt be starting. Who will be in that number 13 shirt? We wonder. Joseph is putting a, a very strong case together.
just veered off course. It was a long way out for George Ford and on the angle. They remain seven points down. And that is probably the only question mark over George Ford, is his ability to kick the goals under pressure. Owen Farrell, we know he can do that. That's probably just the question. I still, I think he can do, but he's not He's not got the money in the bank in that regard yet. Well, in, in Europe, his percentages are good, aren't they? He's at 88, 89. I think he's 22 from 26 now or something. So, yeah. in Europe, he's kicked well. Yep, there's just been a, a handful of kicks. You can, you can pinpoint pretty much all of them, of course, most notably at Welford Road a couple of weeks ago. And he tended to, uh, to hurry things. There's the offloading game. Lovely from Watson and Garvey carrying hard up to the 22. First real chance for Bath to attack the line, and Weber is there. Ford! Outside. Ford, they have the advantage. Glasgow caught outside. Offside. Guja. Looked a little high from Van der Merwe. Day for Ford. Hooper, the inside ball. Joseph perhaps wasn't expecting it. And they'll come back for the penalty. 13 outside. I think structure goes out the window and you know they got the advantage, but that strong offloading work from Devoto, Watson onto Garvey. Big 20, 30 metre gain. 13 offside. This is lovely, out the back from Devoto, being tackled by two men, Watson still manages to get it away. Garvey moves pretty well for someone who's 6'7", 120 kgs. When they get it going, that's a hell of a setup. Yeah, Mark Bennett just there, came out the line, he was under pressure, number 13. I just think there's a there's a hint of a yeah it's a bit high but it's the right call so the call from George Ford is to stick it into the corner open holes just interesting to watch six, Glasgow's six. approach here the first line out and they expected a drive they stood Two right back off it are they going to go up or lead Bath to win the ball and blitz them on the floor. Oh, just got a shot. And that's one of those it's one of those killer errors of timing. So Hooper's on his way down when the ball arrives. They'll dissect that in nauseating detail on Monday morning. But that's a killer. It's a great field position. You've potentially given away three points for that. So now you it's scrum time and you feel like you owe the rest of the team at this point. The scrum's been outstanding. The lane is just. Uh, not functioning quite there at the moment, but they've got a chance here under 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 the well five yards from the line. Bath will try to exert real pressure here. It's an area they had great success, of course, against Toulouse last week. Really put a, a vaunted French pack to the sword. And some of these guys this were not on the field towards the back end of that match. The likes of Walter Batty and Thomas had all arrived at the tail end. Did a terrific job. Tell you what, if you're going to arrive in the front row with a mohawk, you've got to deliver, haven't you? <laughs> White boots or a mohawk, you're looking at man of the match. Never tried that look. Um, I could do a mohawk around the sides. What do you call that? <laughs> Side hawk. Mine was more M1 down the middle. After the set, I want stability immediately. It's tough to grow crops on a busy highway, Ali, you know that. <laughs> and it's Gordon Reid rocking the mohawk. Scotland international and a good understanding in that front row played a lot of his rugby at schoolboy level and age group level alongside Pat MacArthur line out time and a test again for Weber this time it is Bath ball not the prettiest Joseph not too many options open to him that time forwards Devoto looking to put Watson through the hole. Did that go forwards? Yes, yeah, surely. Forward off Watson. It's a nice delayed ball from Ford to Watson, but just ultimately on the back foot. Glasgow applying a bit of pressure at line out time. Bath delivering delivering the ball to Cook. But it was very tap tappy, not good quality. It was Devoto to Watson, pardon me. When you're playing in that sort of traffic under that pressure, your passing's got absolutely perfect. The perfect weight as much as the perfect angle, and it just uh, was a bit too hard from there. Just a ride on the hip of Watson then, didn't it? Tough one to take in traffic. 
So a handful of, uh, of handling errors costing Bath at the moment. Andy? Well, we've only had one try so far, and it was, uh, it was it looked an easy try for Glasgow. If you look at here, there's a bit of confusion in the defence. Look at the space there. Francis, look, Francois Lowe and Ford get in each other's way, and all Glasgow do is exploit the space very, very well. That's where the hole is. That's where they attacked it. DTH van der Mever comes off the shoulder, and Alex Dunbar with a great support line, a great step, a great try. Yeah, absolutely. It's really interesting. So it's almost first minute of the game. Everyone yeah, assumes yeah, yeah. they know where to stand. If someone gets it wrong and calls it last minute, that's, that it isn't, it isn't what you expect at this level, is it? Frankly, it's uh, just a mental error. They so often come in the first five and last five minutes of games. He's been playing really well. I think this, today it's a match-up. He, he's got number 12 in his back today. He'll be playing 13, I think, for Scotland. I think Matt Scott and Alex Dunbar will be the centre partnership. So Jamie Joseph against Dunbar today, I think, will be a cracker. Two, yes! Crouch! Set! Crouch! Two, three! Bind! So Set. Bath with trouble on their line. Right? It's Glasgow who had trouble at scrum time. That never looked even remotely solid. No, I think what you, um, without wanting to send everyone at home to sleep this early on a Sunday afternoon, what you're looking at is a tight head prop in Cusack here. He's, he knows he's under pressure, he's been penalised twice. He knows James is on decent form and has got him going backwards at the moment. So he's very, very defensive, trying to get very, very low, not let James underneath him. But he's, he can't just aim at the ground because he just keeps falling over. Keep it simple. At some point you've got to stand up and take the heat, you know. Hasn't played a lot of rugby this season, Mike Cusack. Just his third appearance of the season. And of course, the Warriors would have you and Murray in that shirt, but Bath on top. Again, it's uh, it's early scrum because they've chosen the scrum again. Bath very confrontational decision. They think they got them on toast here, but Cusack is hitting and going. He doesn't want to hit and wait because he thinks if I can't hit and go and keep it going. When it comes to a pure out-and-out -out strength contest, James is stronger, so he's on yep. the angle, and he's keeping the legs pumping, so he's not... He's just If he just kept, kept his legs where they were, and taken that and just held it steady, he would have been all right. He's just, look, he's just trying to work out an answer to Paul James at the moment. Wiley campaigner. Heading back to the Ospreys, of course, next season. The age of 32, but he's been there, seen it, done it. Okay. Flats, I know you'll have a view on this, okay. but we used to spend so scrum much time looking at scrums. Okay. I don't want pre-engagement, I want a stability after the scrum, or we go harder. Is that clear? Let's sort it out now. He just said exactly the same that 25 minutes ago before yes. he came on the field to play. Yes. So why, why are we having to repeat? Why is John Lees having to repeat himself? There's a lot to think about in the front row, and a lot for these boys to think about. It's not like the old days, mate. You know, they've got to make tackles, they've got to get in line, they've got to obey patterns, structures. They need reminding every now and again. It's just key points, little tip sheets. You bring your violin, and Yeah, just... So Bath looking to drive home this advantage. And they've definitely got a good nudge on here. It's held up, at least. That much is good news. And Bartha making a statement here before Houston picks up and drives on. All the way through. Great strength from Leroy Houston, who played so well last week. Ford. Banahan. Nice quick ball for Jonathan Joseph. Ford again, sends it wide for Aguja. Bounces off the tackle of Van der Merwe. How hard is he to tackle? Just incredible, isn't he? Low centre of gravity, not the biggest of men, but incredibly strong, isn't he? Is that Pat MacArthur over the top? Can we see, or Dunbar? I think it might have been Pat yeah. MacArthur. Fantastic turnover. Flew in there, considering the ground he's made up from a really, really difficult scrum from which half the front five walked back because they were exhausted. He's made it to the far side of the field in defence and turned that ball over. That is exceptional play. He's really done well in the last few years. He, he, he wasn't big enough, he had to bulk up, and he has. But he's, got, he's a great rugby player. You know, he's like the modern hooker. They all have to be good players, don't they, these days? And he's really got it. And he's, physically, he's now matched up. But as you say, Flats, to go from being destroyed in the scrum as he was to get over there to make a turnover, that's a fantastic effort. That's outstanding. Just about every time Bath looked like doing something meaningful, they give up the penalty or they cough the ball up. So 
Glasgow will be mighty relieved that they are back on the halfway line and still in charge of this fixture at the moment. Pergos. Vernon, away. Of course, is transferred from the back row into the centres over the course of the last 15, 16 months or so, but deployed in the back row because of all those injuries. Russell, Van der Merwe, and Maitland can't quite pick it up. It was a nicely orchestrated play. It just looked like Van der Merwe had more time than he thought. Got that ball and whipped it out because that's what he thought he had to do. He didn't need to whip it out. Jim yeah. Russell comes round the back. Just gets whipped across. So let's have a word with um, Neil Hatley, part of the both Bath uh, coaching staff. Neil, your thoughts on the, the opening 20 minutes or so? You, you've conceded the try. There's been a number of handling errors. Not the start you would have wanted. No, it's been it's been a bit frantic, like you say. You know, we we've got looks like we've got a little bit of set piece dominance, um, but probably two or three crucial turnovers from them. Like you said, there, I think McCarthy has done unbelievably well to get across there and, and make that turnover. So, a little bit frantic. We probably just need a period of, of possession at the moment. You mentioned you all mentioned this week that up at Scott's turn in October, it was the breakdown where you were undone. How do you feel that's going? Yeah, we. We, you know, we've had probably two two crucial turnovers. We've had one or two of our own as well. So that'll dictate what happens in this game. You know, they, they worked very hard over the ball to be fair to Glasgow, and we know we're under no illusions as to to how accurate we need to be there. Thanks very much for your time, Neil. Ple pleasure. Rather distracted by um, 16 grown men getting at each other's throats and the two skippers having a word with each other, but it is Glasgow who have the penalty. Yeah, just comparing diary plans, I think, diet plans. I think it's, um, it was an interesting one that because Bath had Glasgow under so much pressure. Actually, I think that was the right decision. Cusack held strong. It did end up on, the, on his front, but that's sometimes just the way it goes. If you watch Paul James's left arm on the near side, I think it's that that goes first. Cusack does switch his bind to the arm of James, which makes it difficult. Jeez, hey. First pen against Bath. That could have gone either way. Cusack will be happy with that one. What did you have for lunch? Well, I certainly didn't have any carbs. I'm not you. So I think that's what not a huge amount of territory gained by the uh, the kick from Russell, but Pergos is releasing Dunbar up the middle, and he's got it away as well to Seymour. Inside the 22, another rapier thrust from Glasgow. Johnny Gray carries it hard into George Ford. Makarawa always looking for the offload. That's his trademark. Undermurva. Hard in the tackle by Joseph and a little bit of momentum on the defensive side of things there. There is the offload, basketball style from Nakarawa. Kusak has lost it. James has pounced on it. Cook. Safely away. It's a shame that for Glasgow. Beautiful break from Dunbar again, and these are powerful guys. It's quite, there's a bit of there's a bit of Jamie Roberts about him. He picks exactly the line he's supposed to pick, and he just runs so hard. Again, they just attack the space. The, the line out throw went over the back of the 15, which meant the Bath could encroach. And all Alex Dunbar did was just pick the hole, and he did it very well. But that's what will be disappointing for Glasgow. The ball retention in the in the face play will be disappointing there for Gregor Townsend. Cusack threw a half dummy then to Chris Cook before he was tackled by Banahan. I think he was so pleased with himself, he relaxed and forgot to look after the ball. Led off for Bath. Nakarawa secures it. Fraser Brown has the ball and Bath splintering a little bit here. Russell. Not the easiest for Mark Bennett to deal with. And good defensive work from Oli Devoto gone forwards from the Scotsman. It is good defensive work, but it didn't need to be spectacular because the pass was poor okay. from Russell. Just one of those. He looked up, had a few options, didn't seem to hit any of them. Put Glasgow right on the back foot. 
When we were on the pitch beforehand, I was watching the Glasgow warm-up and the passing was really slick. It was going to hand really, really good. And just a couple of times, their, their execution of the pass has just let them down. And as soon as the ball goes to the ground, sometimes it can be to your advantage. But there, all it meant was that Bath had their defensive line in place. And they can't afford these turnovers. Glasgow, they don't want a set-piece game. The line out's going very well, but the scrum, Bath have got the upper hand. Bath want, Glasgow want to keep this ball moving all the time. Sometimes, only that bounce pass is indefendable, isn't it? It's uh, not that time. Crouch! Point! Seth! the surge from the home side. Houston controlling, they're waiting for the whistle. Well, half pack fellow had a point to prove. I could tell by the way Paul James engaged, the way he worked his feet then, that he wasn't happy with that last decision, wanting to make amends. And for all those old school hookers, keen to see hooking back in the game, glad to see it back. There was no hooking going on then. The ball was in the tunnel, sat there, Bath backed themselves to put so much pressure on Glasgow, they wouldn't be able to lift a foot and hook it, and just drove over the thing. So there's no doubt this is where Bath have got a huge advantage, but it's the next phase, isn't it? Let's yep. see what the line out. Can they get their game started from line out to? And that's real power from Glasgow. Good control from Houston. Now this is what's let them down so far, the line out. Still friends after all Best that. It's nice, isn't it? So this an area of some concern for Bath, and yet again they've lost the ball. But this time an infringement from Glasgow. Yeah, Nakarawa got up well. From the back. It wasn't a very, it wasn't a very high drill from Francois Lowe and Rob Webber didn't need to be. It needed to be a winnable height at the front there. It's the only place you need it. Yeah, straight on the arm, not looking at the ball, hand around the wrist of Francois Lowe. Do you know what? He was high enough to disrupt it. That's just dull, frankly. You don't need to do that. Potentially gifting three points. Pretty simple, you get your arm up there, you just don't clench your fist and grab onto anything because you're not. there's nothing you can grab onto that's legal when you're up there. So a rather more straightforward kick for George Ford rather than the, the awkward one on the angle from so far out first time around. In almost half an hour, the Bath have their first points of the afternoon. His first kick was a bit slappy, but George Ford, that was a beautiful contact. Never left the centre of the post. Montpellier leading Toulouse by six points to nil now. Still early stages, of course, but they could really upset the apple cart here, Montpellier, in this pool. If Toulouse lose, then Bath or Glasgow can top the pool and get a home quarter-final with victory. Rock! Scenario that neither of them would have expected, in all honesty, at the uh, earlier stages of this competition. Pergos to Russell. Big powerful surge from Al Keller. And release all! Too long from Fraser Brown, and Russell spilt it. This is where Bath liked to strike. Houston. Tries to straighten things up, but good work from Johnny Gray, who is Tiger in the tackle. Yeah, no real advantage come from that. It was a powerful run from Al Kellett, brushing off Oli Devoto. Doesn't miss many. But it was Stuart Hooper flying out the line and causing Skiller. Here's the kickoff. Just watch behind Dom Day. Just watch Van der Merwe underneath catching that ball. That looks really, really simple. It was, to all intents and purposes, a great drill from Bath, except they're in the wrong place. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to stand behind that man, thinking he might well catch it, and keep absolutely focused. It's a really, really difficult skill. Teams will often put a second lifting pod or a second lock behind their own catching, their own catching pod to do it, and it's a really, really tough skill. That's excellent restart work for Van der Merwe. Glasgow's South African-born 
Canadian international. Some of the benefits of playing for Canada, I noticed that he made his international debut against Barbados in Bridgetown. Oh. <laughs> How good is that? Go get move. Boys, we have to hold our balance. Tough gig, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. No cricket bat required. That's it, no, no more. <laughs> you, you wouldn't mind going for a two-week training camp before that game, would you? <laughs> Yeah, it might turn out to be a rather longer tour than you uh, than you first planned. Yeah, again, Glasgow's mistake is just giving the platform for for Bath to really put more pressure on here, and this will probably end up with a penalty for Bath, and suddenly Bath will be, uh, Glasgow will be back in deep in their, their own half, defending line out. Yeah, at this stage, it looks like Bath will be happy scrumming all day long. Devoto. Joseph just looked to be a little bit in front. Danahan with the leap couldn't cling on to it. So nothing's quite sticking at no, the it's, moment. It's not, and even if Banahan had held that, it was a tough one to take. Even if he had held it, he would have been barreled into touch more than likely anyway. Interesting idea. The wingers coming up. We we'll see more stepping up. Nice idea. Not executed quite right. And it's interesting, this, this scrum dominance we've been talking about so much is clear for all to see, but it's not really getting Bath anywhere at this stage because every time they put themselves in a good position they're either coughing it up with a funny little skill area, funny little decision like that or actually some really tenacious defence from Glasgow. But let's not forget the reason Banahan didn't catch that because he had somebody right in his face. You know. It's been, by another back it's been in uh, the lovely little purple patch Matt Banahan, top try scorer for the club in all European competitions. He's the record premiership try scorer for the club as well. He scored eight in the last nine in Europe. Seems to just cut out the, the little errors that, that used to affect his game, certainly when he was picked for England. He wasn't nearly as consistent as this. No, he's a good player. Were you, were you number five, five in that, that I am, list? I am on that list. Um, I am just above the guys with zero tries to their name and um, ever so slightly below the ones with two. So um, let's move on. It's all about when you score them, isn't it? <laughs> to lose a hit back. Oh, dear. Yeah. By seven points to six, but... Stay, stay in line. Oh, no, one now against the head, and this is George Ford poking it over the top to Voto. Mike Profit here. Trouble for Maitland. Scrambles it clear. Three men back in the bath half and Watson had to really stretch to hang on to that he carried upfield over the 10 meter line Glasgow yes. not listening to the referee on that occasion he gave them the warning that's uh, unnecessary from Glasgow some great defensive work the ball ends up by whatever means in the hands of Anthony Watson, a really, really threatening runner, one of the most threatening runners in the European game. Marshalled really well by the Glasgow defence, but you've got to listen to the referee. The instructions were clear. Watson hits the deck, being told to release. Hands on the ball. If you're lying on your back, holding onto that ball, you're doing something wrong. It just makes it so easy for the referee and undoes all that good work. And the thing is, Flats, the, the defence is rock solid. It's looking really good. So yeah. let, let them have the ball and no just need. realign. Well, half time approaching. Every point so critical. It's been cagey and but for that excellent opening try in the fifth minute of the match. It's been remarkably open. Squeezed it through. Vital points you feel in the context of this fixture, the, the cagey nature of it, the rather error strewn nature of it. Yeah, I think after watching Bath dismantle Toulouse last week, we all kind of fingers crossed as rugby punters we're going to see something similar. But in simple terms, I think they're up against a much better team this week. George Ford beyond the 200 point barrier for the season now. Ball is bobbling around, I think that's been claimed. Glasgow and Nakarawa 
He's looking ahead towards the 22. Little show on the inside, instead it's for Vernon, and that's dangerous. Banahan might have been better off looking at the ball rather than the onrushing Glasgow players. Fergus orchestrated the game at Scottsdale back in October really nicely. Nico Matawalu on the bench for this, remember. Rich is at nine for Gregor Townsend. To the short side, and Seymour. Banahan saw that coming a mile away. Yeah, I think they could put on a postcard next time. Banahan saw that. It was never on. Not the right option, Andy, was it? Terrible option. All Henry Purgis did there to Tommy Seymour was make it a four on two in defence. Look at that. No one there. Bad decision. First bad decision that Purgis has made. Decision making normally is one of his uh, real strengths. Better line out for Bart Ford under pressure. Fraser Brown bearing down on him at high speed. Maguja can't claim that. That's what low. Hold. Doing a fine job. Garvey. Joseph. Maguja. Got a big send on him, isn't he? It's bizarre, isn't it? Not a big guy. Just so hard to tackle. Garvey again, Ford attacking the line at pace. And good dent as well from Paul James. Low, upended. Hooper. Ford measures it up carefully. Banahan's coming right in field. Russell wants it. Banahan will have it from under his nose. Just a little bit more care required over the offload. George Ford is being manhandled back over the halfway line as a result. Done well to feed that back. Cook gets that away. How did he manage that? Watson to Houston on the touchline over the touchline. Uh, it must be excruciating for the Bath coaches fantastic take from Banahan in the air as soon as the ball went up I watched him he's right below our commentary box here his eyes never left that ball he had no idea who was on the floor for Glasgow who was going up and who wasn't he's entering the right screen now but you're right flat Glasgow are much better to lose because last week you didn't see Bath kick in attack because they were making so much inroads through the Toulouse defence Glasgow's defence is holding firm and it's forcing George Ford to to kick but then when you've got a kick chase like uh, the man Bannerpin upon you would do that. You can just see it here. His next step there it is there on the white line. Great call. Still not sure how Chris Cook got that ball away off the breakdown. Looked like he should have given it earlier, but he made it work. It was one thing to stretch the arm out, but then to make sure that it that it went backwards as well was pretty extraordinary given the fact there was an entire body in the way. Managed He's been quite a fine this season, isn't he, Chris Cook? He's leapfrogged the likes of Peter Stringer and Mickey Young. He has, he did so well there, and a lot to do with that leg power staying on his feet. I mean, he's got a big bottom half. That was some try he did last week, wasn't it? 70 yards. Oh, yeah. There's not many former Bathroom has would run that long for a try. That's for <laughs> I sure. can't think of any. <laughs> not one. I'm not be sure about the straightness of the line out, but Johnny Lacey seemed happy enough. And here's Fraser Brown. Feeds it back for Pergos. Houston talking all the time to Banahan, who's on his outside. Ford, Watson, did brilliantly to get that away to Aguja. Hooper, Bath really struggling to make any inroads in meaningful parts of the pitch. Maybe now through Davy Wilson. Ford caught in possession. He's down and he's not terribly happy by the looks of things. And release one! Away! Use it! George Ford out of commission for the moment. Weber. Devoto. Oh. 
This is a chase for Banahan. He's not going to get the bounce, or is he? He is. It ended up being a fantastic kick, that. Wonder how George Ford's looking. Got whacked at that breakdown. I think it was by Pat McArthur. Referee deemed it legal. So we've got a good uh, Brizzle Brown credit at Open Side. He's a hooker normally. Open Side, he's making a number of tackles all around the park here. Oh, it's just oh, a yeah. Arm. Yeah, I think you. I think he come pretty much over the ball. You might say it's not strictly through the gate, but I think the gate was pretty unprotected too. And yes, it might look like a right hook, but everyone swings an arm going into a right. There's nothing wrong with that. Just caught him on the jaw. That's the game. I agree, Fraser Brown's everywhere. I think it was him covering was Aguja on the far side. Outstanding tackle. Totally secure at line out time through Makarawa. And Pergos tucks it away for half time. And it's been a fascinating 40 minutes. Glasgow have had the better of it. Certainly they've scored the only try through Alex Dunbar. George Ford has hit back with a, a couple of penalties. Very different to the match last week in the south of France, Sandy. Yeah, it is. I mean, Glasgow's going there happy but surprised that they're still 7-6 th up. They've defended really well, but they've been made their execution sometimes not been there. They're giving mistakes away. And when Bath have got that dominance in the scrum time, that has been disappointing. But they'll be very pleased to be leading at halftime. So the huddle on the field, and they've made a couple of changes as well. Both props have been changed by Gregor Townsend. So John Welsh is on to the tight head, there he is, started last week against Montpellier and uh, he's replacing Mike Cusack, Jerry Yanayanutawa, brilliantly named, comes on to the loose head in place of Gordon Reid. I think for the purposes of this match, David Flatman, you might just refer to him as Jerry. Are you suggesting I can't pronounce Yanayanutawa? Not for a minute. Yeah, from now on it's Jerry. So they have had scrum trouble. But they've looked very dangerous in open play. Glasgow, only the second team to lead Bath at half-time here at the Reg all season. Bath just not finding the uh, the all-court game that they've become famous for. That is a monstrous clearance as well. What a fantastic kick that was. I just I often wonder about these kickoffs that give you no chance of winning the ball back and give the opposition every chance of clearing it. I just don't never quite get it I know it's kind of a bit old-school yeah, and unoriginal but I think stick it in the try. mixer at least you've got a 50-50 oh, certainly a better start to the second half of Finn Russell than it was start of the first half yeah. so the line out working this time Garvey provides the ball for Cook Maitland well positioned in the sunshine Van der Merwe looking to go around the outside of Joseph this is Mark Bennett Swallowed up by Chris Cook. And they're lacking a, a scrum half. Here goes John Welsh. Garvey making the tackle right up on the game line. Yes. Glasgow, oh, remember, no, no, never no. made it to the quarterfinals of the top flight European competition. That's what's on the line for them today. Russell getting it in behind Matt Banahan, but just a little bit too much on it. Yeah, too heavy on that. And Glasgow actually put themselves in a difficult position. Some nice play to achieve some yardage out wide. But once you've got slow ball coming from a breakdown, one yard in from the touchline, it just makes it so easy to defend. And you saw Garvey flying off the line, putting them right on the back foot. Martin Bayfield, news from the touchline. Yeah, the message from Gregor Townsend as he wandered back out was patience and belief. Patience when they got the ball in hand, he felt that there were opportunities where they could threaten the Bath line. They just rushed things a bit and to believe that they can win this game. And you've seen the changes he's made because of the pressure they were under in the scrum. For Bath, Neil Hatley says, well, we've got to get hold of the ball and hang on to it just a little bit longer, mate. Play more percentage rugby. They're getting the ball in their hands in fits and starts. They can't build anything on that. They need to get hold of it and be a little bit more constructive with it. Bind. Thanks, Pace. Says. So let's see the impact of Yanatoa and Welch. Rogos is clapping, but Bath have the ball and now the penalty. I don't know what Pergos is clapping about. <laughs> Overextended and down. Overextended and I think you've got, you've got a case there where Glasgow have absolutely gone to put, our mate Big Jerry's gone to put the shove on Wilson. Wilson hasn't budged an inch. So in the first half we saw Bath win a penalty because they moved 
half a yard forward. Glasgow never achieved that. So yes, they're putting a shove on, and they rock Bath a bit, but look how low they are. Look how low John Welsh is. Pretty difficult to keep the guy up. This is the side where the action happens. Tries to, I tell you what, am I allowed to change my mind on national television? Yes, you can. Six. That should have been a penalty to Glasgow. Pergos had every right to clap. What you should really do is get an ex-front row forward in there, in here, to commentate on the scrum. Do you know exactly what's going on there? There was a wry smile playing across the face of Yanni Yanatawa, but Bath are inside the 22 and looking to threaten here. Cook, Devoto, on early, of course, for Kyle Eastman. Joseph. Day, and Cooper, the locks combining in the wide channel. Francois Lowe gathering it and it's gone loose, but they continue upfield through Garvey. Ford, a little show, it was on either way actually for George Ford, he decided to hang on to it. Joseph, Joseph still going. Cook, Watson, Weber, desperate for a decent start to this second half, but Johnny Lacey is crediting Fraser Brown. Tell you what, he is some player, isn't he? He really is. You know. He Everyone sort of looked to the, the selection this week and it was a needs must at seven. He has played a whole season for Harriet's Club in Edinburgh um, at open side, but he's actually, th that's one thing. Playing at the rec against Francois Lowe is another and he's been outstanding. His work rate and his ball, his, the way he gets over the ball is fantastic. I tell you what, before the game, if you had said to a Glasgow supporter or a punter like us, if Fraser Brown could just hold his own in a game like this, he'd have done well for his team. He's one of the outstanding players on the field by Scotland as far as I understand it before he'd actually started for Glasgow which takes a bit of doing this is his first start in Europe and of course no Ryan Wilson today so that's one of the reasons for his switch Toby Flood has scored for Toulouse 20 points to 9 now they lead Montpellier so things remain that way Toulouse will top the pool they will have the home quarter final and then okay. it's just a question of uh, whether Bath can pull it out here to get to 19 points, which is the all-important figure. Okay. Glasgow potentially with eight. If they win with a bonus point, they could get up to 19 themselves. That looks like the end of the day for Alex Dunbar. That's a big loss, that, for Glasgow. He's looked fantastic. Doesn't do much that's complicated, doesn't need to. He's big and powerful, direct. He's someone who makes opposition defences really, really think about what they're doing, but also really got to physically commit. He hits arms, he's making breaks. Big loss. So Peter Horn um, in his place. As Vernon secures the ball, Russell playing with it, and teammates screaming at him. It's been fumbled, but backwards by Yana Yanitawa. Didn't quite happen. Didn't quite happen for Finn Russell then. He thought he was giving it to somebody that wasn't there by accident. A couple of rebounds, regathered it himself, but seemed to take a couple of age, sort of double, triple pumping it, wondering where he's going to throw it before George Ford got hold of him. He dummied, Lovely ball at the back of the line -up. Great lineup, but he dummied and he passed it to himself. Actually came forward there actually off the board. Yeah. That was a penalty actually, because he's playing it in front from a from a knock-on. That should have been a penalty for Bath, but it happened so quickly, I'm surprised they didn't see it. But the thing what I've liked about Finn Russell is that when something like that happens, he forgets about it. Next job, he doesn't carry any baggage, he just moves on. It's a good temperament to have at standoff. Yeah, talking to Gregor Townsend in the week, he was describing him as very composed for a, a 22 year old and super competitive as well in his mind all the best tens the likes of Sexton Carter and uh, and all the others we could list very very competitive at their core and Russell is one of those what, and what a good mentor to have in Gregor Townsend oh yeah ideal Crouch. There's confirmation of the pool as we are at the moment with Toulouse leading in Montpellier.
Houston. Looking to work off this scrum dominance. That's a win out. has been really good though from Glasgow today. Garvey trying to puncture a hole. Weber straight in over the top of the ball as well to compete the Warriors. Ford. Watson straightening. Dragged down by guess who? Johnny Gray. No. Ford. And the Boto spills. That's Nakarawa just trying to move the bodies out of the way. It wasn't terribly elegant. Here's Russell. What's on? Okay. Right, they go. Seymour. Good offloading and excellent work from the Scotsman. Away goes Bennett. Pergos. Vernon. What, what a, a try from Glasgow. What a try. Richie Vernon finishes off a flowing move all the way from inside their 22. And it is kicking off. Absolutely outstanding rugby. I have a flag of suspected foul play against one of your players. I need to check. Wow. Marshall Kilgore, our television match official, coming into play. The... Touch judge had his flag yeah. extended. Let's see the foul play. Yeah. If it's not, that's going to be one of the tries of the tournament for Glasgow. At the last breakdown here, yes. just around the 10 meter line, when the ball was being moved away, okay. number six, Glasgow, okay. lifted the player's legs up and just dropped them on the ground. Okay. okay. Have you a recommendation? No, I want you to check it. Okay. Marshall? Yes, John. That was a rather weary. Please a weary response. By six Glasgow on the back there at the rock over in front of Sean, please. Will do, John. Okay. Just fall clear. Lifted above the horizontal. And so watch uh, Leon in Nakarawa here. Mm. No, there's nothing wrong with that. He just hooks a leg over. He hasn't got control of his whole body. He doesn't send his head towards the floor. His head's already on the floor. He cannot disallow that try for that. No, no. way. Look at that, that is, he's down there, he's not moving, the head, the shoulders, nothing's moving. That's not a penalty, that should not be turned over. John Lacey cannot turn this over. John, that's all, that's all the sign. Okay. And does. I'm happy with just the penalty for lifting the leg of oh, Davis. Oh, no. Davis play, do you agree? He was trying to move the player, John, I think, just, you, you're going with the penalty. Okay, you're ha are you happy to award a try? I am. Okay. So Marshall Kilgore Sorry. has advised that the try should stand. Gregor Townsend will be delighted. Warriors fans will be delighted. Fans of great flowing rugby will be delighted. Richie Vernon finishing one of the one of the real high quality scores we've seen in this competition. Hey, for a split second there, I thought the language between those two indicated they weren't going to allow that and it was going to be a penalty. That would have been a shocker. That was a that was an astonishing try. I think that was strong TMO refereeing if you, if you like because the way that John Lacey interpreted was that it was going to be a penalty but Marshall Kigar said no nope, it was he was just clearing it he never left the ground Quite. 12 points to six with half an hour left to play. This was a bit special. You said it was on here, and I just wondered with Finn Russell if, if he needed to throw that miss pass. He did. I wondered if that pass had, had ended it. They did so well to keep this going. Look at the desire of the Glasgow players to get in a position that they can open yeah. themselves up, and then Richie Vernon, who's got real gas. Mark Bennett was involved in that twice. Brilliantly. Pergos did Great well. Try. Is Pergos letting fly? Watson. Bath need a response of some kind now. Hooper, the captain. Front row have been changed for the home side, so Autorak, Batty, and Thomas onto the field. Maitland taking a bit of time. 
Excellent kick. Brilliant. Oh. Double take from Watson before coming back into play. This is Devoto. Joseph running the line and gathering one-handed. Cook stealing an extra four or five meters. There's the advantage. As we're not rolling away. It's Fraser Brown being pinged then rightly. He had to make an effort to release and get out of the way. It's a shame because reserve tight head prop John Welsh is apologizing to his teammates. I don't think it was actually him that got penalized. I think it was this guy. Fraser Brown Welsh was in a lovely position, had good grip on that ball. So no shot at the post. Oh, look at that latest score. Look at that. Montpellier have scored a brace in double quick time to lead by 21 points to 20. Lucas Dupont wow. on the score sheet. I mean, when it got to 20 points tonight, I thought the two teams here are playing for second place now, but that is a massive turnaround. And that at the moment puts, puts Glasgow in the knockout stages of the Champions Cup. With a home quarter final. Oh, wow. It's not done yet. Plenty of time to go, and Stuart Hooper will be reminding his teammates that. Six points the difference, Batty poised. Cook urging him on. This is as good a drive as we've seen from Bath this afternoon. They're closing in. All the power in the world. Penalty try, got to be. And yep. a penalty try awarded. Yeah, Al Kellett knew exactly what was coming. Hit the deck. Made it very, very easy for the referee. Stuart Hooper has a little word with him on the way up. He's not too happy about bit of afters, there's quite a bit of bite to this game, I don't know if they know the score down, down in France. A yellow for the Glasgow captain. I think it's a tough one, it's, if, you, if you know it's going over, and you do anything to stop it, but if you just gave yourself a split second and thought clearly about it, you'd think, well, if it goes over, it's, de it's a dent to our psyche, to our egos, but the kick is more difficult and I'm not going to get yellow carded. This makes it easy, easy for Bath. Double whammy there, isn't it? Seven point and 14 men for the next 10 minutes. It really is, and I think Al Kellett's been fantastic. First 50 minutes, he's carried well, defended well. All the way from up here in the comms box, we can hear him. He's so vocal, that big booming voice. It's a nice good. drill. Good competition, actually, from Kellett originally. Hooper does well to hold that. Great throw from Batty. Just watch Kellett here. He tackled Hooper around the ankles. You can't see it now. He's at the back. Take my word for it, people. It's the right call, the flat, because it was clear as a clear stopping of a try and so that's that's exactly what yellow cars for yeah. it's exactly what penalty tries for so good, good call so a pivotal moment you feel let's go down a man bath now leading for the first time in the match interesting one that so why is that not a dom, penalty why is that not a penalty so dom day bar second row goes up Hits his hands and bounces forward, and it's caught by Ross Batty in front of him. He didn't come from an onside position. I think he was standing in front of him at all time. Got away with that. Have a look. So Ross Batty actually is left there. He's in front of him. Bounces off, catches it. Nice bit of skill. Should be a penalty. Yep. Do well to lift and catch in the same motion. Tell you what's nice. It's preferred to Dave Atwood in the second row for this match. Bath now occupying top spot. And 17 points would not be enough for Toulouse. Glasgow wouldn't make it either if the scores remained as they are at the moment. Things turning with every single minute. Is that the first scrum penalty? Glasgow have been awarded today. No, it's the, it's the second. It's the second, I think. Um, what we see is Big Jerry. He is absolute on the loose head. The Glasgow is absolutely the guy that folds, but he folds because the shove from Henry Thomas is early. So it's not about the end result. It's the first offence. Bath go early. Big Jerry folds in. So if that had been a second later and the ball was in, it would have been Bath's penalty, but the ball wasn't in. So here's my issue. Just about every scrum here today has either been reset or there's been a penalty. We've not seen the ball come in and come out as it's meant to be. If it has, it's happened maybe once or twice, and it happens in every single game. We've got a phase that's fundamentally just not working in, in every game we watch. 
Well, I think they should assemble a panel of um, overweight um, red meat lovers to get together, very, very highly paid. We should meet in Brussels once every six weeks and just talk about it, you know? Surely that's not regular enough. <laughs> is to go back in front. He's measured that really, really Wait, nicely. Big broad smile from Finn Russell. Glasgow take the lead again, 15-13. Great kick, and I, I do agree with you, Andy, on the scrum conversations along the conversation for another day, but... It's a, it's a major part of the game, a vital part of the game that just isn't working, it just doesn't work. So something needs to be done and talked about and tried at least. What, what kick this was, and just, what a knife edge this is, what a seesaw. Now, that kick wasn't just to take the lead, that's now the moment to be a home quarter final. This is going to go back and forward all afternoon now, isn't it? Russell again puts boot to ball. In the meantime, Dave Atwood has come onto the field, replacing Dom Day. England, of course, with problems in the, the second row at the moment. Launched for in Law's sideline yesterday. Jeff Parling going down. So the likes of Dave guys, Atwood and guys, George Cruz, Graham Kitchen are all this. vying for a, a test spot. And this game does seem to be likely to seesaw a huge amount of drama. But you look at the guys that Bath have just brought on. They brought on Autorak, Batty, Henry Thomas and Dave Atwood. These are four guys starting on the bench, four of the best performers in the Aviva. Untidy, but gathered in by Batty, who is all action. He's been having a great season, really pushing Rob Webber for his starting place. Ford goes high. It's Glasgow's. Burgos. Horn. Clever. Not much angle to work with. Tucked it nicely down the touchline. Yeah, he's a, he's a really canny operator. Peter Horn and uh, nice, just get it down there. Glasgow been exerting a lot of pressure at line out time. Good decision there. To lose back in front with uh, a Toby Flood penalty. Seesawing in France, seesawing here in the West Country, and Al Kellogg having a sit down. Less than five minutes to go on that symphony now. Atwood collects at the tail. And Demerva. Forwards. Knock on him offside. Yeah, I think he's um, the ref spotted one from Glasgow that he missed from Bath five minutes ago. Uh, that was a very obvious one. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, clear. Pat MacArthur hadn't come back from uh, an offside position. See that comes off DTH van der Merve there. There's Pat MacArthur right in front of John Lacey. inside the Glasgow half a pensive Mike Ford they've had so many terrific wins here at the wreck particularly this season they thump Leicester here to beat Saracens well Harlequins and Exeter were both disposed of Montpellier given a thumping as well but they've met their match this afternoon Ford onwards to Banahan crashing over the game line Better ball for Ford to work with. Joseph, nice and flat to Aguja. And the Merva drives him back infield. Rock hands away! Joseph. Not quite the miracle kick that he produced in Toulouse last weekend. That was something from nothing Bath could. Well, they, they give everything for, for something like that right now. No, but it puts, puts Glasgow back under pressure at line-out time. There we are as we stand. Remember that the man that's pulled the line-outs, Al Kellogg, is off the park at the moment. Johnny Gray will step into that. Guys, look, open He calls the line-out for Scotland now as well. He, Al Kellogg's mentor Johnny Gray very, very well. All those hands <laughs> from Nakarawa. Incredible hands. Just effortless, seemingly. Use it! Good kick. Very good. Good clearance. 
turn to the two scrum halves Kurgos and Matuwala who's of course coming to Bath next year how do they compare as players why would you pick Kurgos? Kurgos all about game management and core skills and Matuwala's kind of loose and crazy and unpredictable what is it that's it absolutely in a nutshell what you've just described Henry Kurgos is very good at organizing his game management is very good Nico if you want you want to win a game and do a piece of magic that no one else I don't think in this competition could do he's your man so a 15-13 I'd say per Pergos will stay for as long as possible. If that result was to be turned round and Bath were leading, then I think you'll see Matuwalo come in. Garvey, lovely line-out ball for Bath this. Francois Lowe, such a huge influence against Toulouse. The whole back row combined beautifully. This is Nick Alterac, a young man in a hurry. Lowe digging. Glasgow infringing off their feet. Love to see that again. We're a long way away, but look like that. A couple of guys, Matualu and Big Jerry, I'm still calling him. I'm going to stick with that if you don't mind. They looked in decent position to me. Love to see where their knees are. Wasn't Matt. He's got Fraser Brown coming in from the side, yeah. which yeah. It, was, it was tight. Do you know, I think ultimately it's the right decision. He did hit the deck. Wasn't, it wasn't Big Jerry that was penalised, he was in a nice position. So Ford's going to have a crack at this. This is a long range effort and we talked about the, the nature of the pressure on the shoulders of George Ford. This is a big one in the context of Bath season. Pulled it. Yes. Okay. Needed those points, Bath. Of course, Craig knows yeah. it. George Ford knows it. Changes to be made here. Stringer on. Ferns on. And for Glasgow, okay. James Eddy. James Eddy will go for Al Kellogg and, um, and Nakawara will go into the second row. That's the end of the segment. But Glasgow have come out of that 10 minutes fairly well. I think they've won it 3-0 of a that period of time it's kicks like that isn't it Andy that they need to be nailed yep. that's it you look at the strength of this bath bench abroad on 98 caps and stringer Carl Ferns monstrous back rower they're gonna put themselves in positions but they've got to make turn that into points Sean Lamond onto the field as well this is Ferns who goes clattering over the top of Fraser Brown and Ford it'll show thought about giving it to Atwood and then clung on Stringer delays it for low. Ferns again. Devoto. Oof. Thomas gathering the ball, but also gathering Lament. It won't be in your way. Batsy, so quick. Makarawa with the tackle. Bath been given no room to breathe at all in attack. We have the advantage though. Watson. Back we come. Obstruction on the way in you. Blocking arriving players, 19 whites. That's James Eddy. Obstructing cleaner. Well, it's good for Bath to keep the ball alive for so many faces, but it's reasonably lateral, some really good defence. Glasgow, making Glasgow. Really, they're making really good decisions in defence by taking players low. There's no point in taking Fraser Brown trying to take Carl Friends high. He's going to get boshed away. He's making good decisions. Peter Horn did exactly the same, cutting their legs down, getting them to the ground. My team, don't come in the side like that and block your arriving sorry, players. No, no. Sorry, sorry. So Jim Zeddy's got penalised here for standing there. That happens See, every single rock. Do you know, I think you make that tackle and you get the opportunity to get in the way for a second. You absolutely do it. I think that's a soft pen. Well, he wasn't given a whole lot of time to get out of the way, certainly, but by off on the attack. That's one, mate. That's one. No. 
I don't see why Stringer's being warned. It's moving. Perhaps it's lateral. It's progress, though. It's decent progress. Glasgow won't need too much reminding of the penalty try that they conceded as Joseph goes around the outside. Watson! Watson is still streaking towards the line! Oh, yes! Is it down? Is it down? Big question mark about the grounding. What a defence by Finn Russell. Two things. That's a fantastic piece of defence from Finn Russell. Or it could well be. And isn't it just wonderful to see someone that quick really open the taps? Okay, what if you want to do that Finn Russell saved that try. How has he done it? It looked to me like a player had a hand under the ball all of the time. Okay, so first question? Yes. Is he going to refer this? Marshall, can you hear me? Yes, he is. Yes, John, I'm here. yes or no, please. Okay, try yes or no, stand by. So the advice from Sean Gallagher, who's the, the touch judge on this side, suggested that he thought there was a hand under the ball at all times. That's Finn Russell, who's under there, and Sean Maitland coming in. Russell's in a good position because his body's under there. That's the ball up in the air at the moment. It certainly is not down there. You can see it's still up. It's still up there. Maitland doing some great work in there, isn't he? Real upper body strength. I don't, I don't think this has got down. I think this has been brilliant defence from Glasgow. Unbelievable effort. Russell and Maitland. Finn Russell and then Maitland, who ultimately does the important bit there of holding it. You're not going to see it from this angle. We need to see it from the other side. Because yeah, no, so, is he not offside? No. He's set up a ball and it's got in the No. How's that offside? No. Previously, excuse me. That's up. The, the fans of the wreck are cheering, but uh, that ball's nowhere near down yet. No. Remember this, the first question, so is it a try, yes or no? So they can't see the ball grounding, they can't give it. The first, uh, the first angle looked like it might have been the best. We almost need to see it from that south stand, don't we, looking back. John, Marshall, yes. Yes, ball was held up, scrum okay. five. Well, what about that for some defending from the Glasgow Warriors? Watson denied, Mike Ford denied. But that was high quality from Russell and Maitland. Tell you what, if Glasgow progress to the next stage, they will look at that moment as a key moment. That was fantastic, fantastic piece of defence. They're going to have to do it again, though, in the scrum time. Big scrum coming up for Glasgow, very big. And if the ball does come out, then Big Sam Burgess is on to crash it up. And it's Ford who's coming off. So Devoto moves to 10. Burgess into the centres alongside Joseph. And I think they've taken George Ford off for a concussion precautionary. Little look at his head. He's running off with a dot, but he's just run past the bench. He's not happy. He shouted, I'm fine to the bench. Again, the players can't make these decisions because they're too tough for their own good once they're out there and caught up in it. Big scrum now. So if they don't go for a push over here, I reckon it'll go Sam Burgess and he'll run straight up in Russell, Please. Peter Horn. Plenty of options. Please let this be a completed scrum. It's it's a push over to me. Solid. Just got to keep control on that tight head. He's edging. Easy. He's scoring. Oh, they awarded the penalty try he has. He's heading under the sticks. Penalty try, makes the kick a load easier, of course, makes it a guaranteed seven. Massive scrummaging from Bath. Nick Autorak marching forward, it just needed Henry Thomas to match him so it didn't skew round. Ross Batty's been so impressive, he ripped Henry Thomas through that hole on the tight head. Watch Autorak, he is piling forward here, look at that power. Thomas on the right has to pull himself through, not easy. Loads of control from Carl Ferns. I'm not sure why it's a penalty try and not a try. That, that does make a difference, that, when you think that George Ford's just gone off. We we'll need a different angle for that, but it is what it is. It's Devoto who's got the, the simplest of conversions. Well, the scrum dominance didn't do much for Bath in the opening half. Glasgow were, were better in other departments and were making the most of it. But Devoto is moving Bath up to 20 points, five points the difference, 13 minutes left to play. What is done well Andy, your scrum can still be a beautiful thing. It can be. 
whether I'd describe it as beautiful or not, I'm not sure, but it certainly was very powerful. And I think that at the moment the difference is the strength of the back pack over Glasgow. Oh, Guja thought he was on for the intercept there for a brief moment, but not forwards. I think the uh, the original Atwood knock-on from the kickoff would have brought him back anyway. Montelier back in front oh, by a single a point. At the moment, Toulouse and Glasgow are out. And Bath would go through, but I'm not going to say that with any kind of certainty until the final whistle has been blown on both sides of the channel. You know, when there was the new challenge, the European Champions Cup this year with the five groups of four and the three group second places going through, we didn't know how it was going to pan out. My goodness, how good a competition is this now? Fantastic. Coach! Bind. The situation would be good for Saracens as well, who of course take on Clermont in the Massive Central a little later this afternoon, live on BT Sport. Vernon picks up, but he's being battered backwards, and Carl Ferns is really getting stuck in since coming off the bench. Hit from Ferns was savage, wasn't it? Johnny Gray. Garvey takes him low. Makarawa, has he fumbled that? He has. Stringer wants it. Yeah, so he knocked the ball on and regathered it. Ferns got over the top. Stop Bath getting an advantage, wouldn't release it. Ferns has made an impact off the bench, hasn't it? Yeah. Jeez. He just hit Vernon then off the back. And it just, he heard the smack from up here. That's an awful lot of ball that Bath have had since the break. Here goes Ferns, evil oh. intent, whack, right in the, I mean, that is... It's a kidney, it's a kidney shot, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think, I think it comes from being yes. incredibly aggressive and stronger than everyone else. Is he the most powerful man in the, in the bar squad? Yeah, oh, since I retired, Ali, he's the most powerful... <laughs> yes, he is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this should be fun. Nico Matawalu's on. Fergus is making way, and he can do things that, that other scrum halves can't. This is it, five points down, this is when Nico... Nico to make the difference, he can get a try from anywhere. Against his new club, don't forget. That's one line. Bath know that they can make inroads with this drive. It's taken them a while to get it all together, to string the various different elements together to combine. To photo. Oh dear, he's got no distance on that. That is a fabulous take from Sean Lamont. Drops it, but backwards. And Glasgow. Now possession of it. Russell. No intention to play within the half. Understandable. Watson. The best of kicks. Matawali. Down the outside of Watson. Not too many do that. Oh. And then the, <laughs> the elaborate offload. I told you it'd be fun. Oh. Goose step over the head. Standard stuff. He's looking. Russell's looking as well. This is Lamont. Gray. Horn. Bennett. And the outside. Good chase on. And a little dart. Good work from Seymour. Real competition for the ball, but. Bar struggling to get back here in any numbers. And Stringer just clutching at it and steering himself into touch. Seymour did so well then to regather that strike for the line. Banahan timed his defensive tackle perfectly. How often do we see an early tackle then? One second, please. Sorry, what was that? George Ford back onto the field. And Devoto is making way, so Burgess will stay. That's 23. Yeah, we get get sure that's right actually. 23 back, please. Looks like Burgess has come off to me. This is brilliant, brilliant play by Mark Bennett. Just put the chip 22. in perfectly weighted. Yeah, and Thomas Timmer gets a bit of luck as you need. And then it was just a real scandal. Look, lovely little chip there. Always going to bounce up. 
And there it is there, it comes to Tommy Seymour. Good back defence there from Banahan, and then it was just a big competition on the ground. What a piece of skill that little chip through, wasn't it, off the side of the boot? So Devoto does make way for Ford's return. Let's go, please. If I was Richie Vernon standing at the back of this line out of one flat ball straight to Sam Burgess, wouldn't you, Andy? <laughs> Never. Maybe not. <laughs> An attacking position this is for the Warriors. Nakarawa, who's been the go-to man for much of the line out this afternoon. Matawalu issuing the instructions and good headway being made. He wants to go to the short side. It's been spilt by Seymour. Skinner tries to put some distance on it. Not sure that the, the blind side option was the right one at that point. No, nope, pretty confidently say it wasn't, but you bring a guy on to add some spark and try something. He's going to have a go, isn't he? It's all about making right decisions under pressure. That wasn't Tommy Seymour, who is on fire, and you, you want to get the ball to him as much as you can, but only in the right area. And certainly, not with four defenders right on top of you. He was superb last week, wasn't he, against Montpellier? It was Van der Merwe who picked up all the tries, but Seymour was stunning. Beat a hatful of defenders, carried a huge amount. It's interesting, we've seen in both halves, in Pergos and Matawal, who now attack the blind side when it was the wrong option. It's almost like they analysed Bath, decided that was a weakness, and have gone through with it without really putting their heads up. Bath perhaps have done a bit of self-analysis and sorted that problem out during the week. <laughs> Just seven minutes left to play. Mike Ford is off for a stroll. The nerves can't handle it. Might have picked up a bit of fruity language from Ross Batty there and the ref, Mike. But um, gets a bit competitive in that front row, doesn't it? Frankly, I've not heard him utter many sentences without speaking, so it's best just to keep the microphone away from him, I think. hanging in the balance right now. Two, three. Bind. Set. That's real power for you. More of it from Ferns. Matty and Atwood combining nicely. And going straight through the middle of the ruck as well. Ford. Taken by Maitland, anticipating well. And he thinks there might be some open space over here. Lamont, Maitland. Jarvie making yet another tackle. James Eddy. Russell, Akarawa. Russell again, Eddie, Francois Lowe having to go around the ankles, a little bit of progress made here by Glasgow, it's patient, and Vernon sets off, Russell gathers nicely, Nakarawa again, Atawalu, where is he off to? Tackle of Joseph, the inside ball for Bennett. Bennett might be away here. What stepping from Mark Bennett. What a tackle from Nick Alterac. Standing. Out it comes. Bath stretched here. Glasgow, oh, the ball stolen by Banahan. But offside. That's offside, that's a yellow card then. That's a penalty for being offside. That's not a guaranteed try. It's a penalty try then, isn't it? Exactly. Therefore, a yellow see what the decision is from 
Johnny Lacey. Is he going to have any further word? 16 offside. Doesn't look that way. To be fair, it's 16 offside, which yeah. is not Matt Banahan. If that had been Matt Banahan offside, and then he takes it, then that's a, that's a yellow card penalty try, but it's not. I was just going to say, I really want to see that from another angle. I didn't think Matt Banahan was offside at all, and he wasn't. It's Ross Batty that's been pinged. Russell, shaping the kick Ooh, for touch, but it's Nakarawa on the crash. Montpellier, by the way, have beaten Toulouse. And that's Glasgow's ball. What a tackle that was from Dave Atwood on Matuwalu. Nakarawa, sorry, carrying that ball up. It looked like a bit of a simple way to start a tap penalty move. Easy to defend. There's the a tackle that's still got to be made. Sorry, Flats, need to um, update everybody with the, the news from, from France. Montpellier beating Toulouse by 27 points to 26. Toulouse go to 17 points. That will not be enough. As it stands, Bath will be on 19 and they would qualify with a home quarterfinal. Toulouse and Glasgow would miss out. 18, the benchmark, of course. This could be just about the biggest scrum in Glasgow Warriors history. Five yards out, can they get a seven-pointer to get them into a home quarterfinal? Well, the last scrum, as soon as that ball came in, admittedly it was Bath put in. Henry Thomas, fresh with Dave Atwood, fresh behind him, absolutely murdered their side of the scrum. That right shoulder flew up. This one is more to do with Autorak on the Glasgow pudding, trying to disrupt John Welsh on the tight head. And get the Glasgow scrum barreling backwards and towards, towards the bar scrum half. Peter Stringer, where they've got the numbered strength, so Autorak looking to move forward here. Big scrum for Glasgow, huge. Get it in, get it out. It's where you earn your money, Andy. There's a brilliant noise. It's it's brewing, it's bubbling. And we'll reach a crescendo pretty soon now. Three minutes left to play. A quarter final on the line, a home quarter final on the line. What an advantage that could prove. Huge pressure from Bath, picked up by Vernon, the offload is a good one, Horn is on the crash ball. Johnny Gray rumbled backwards. Matawali, was that a little fumble? It's a delay and it's allowed the Bath defence to get up right in the faces of Glasgow. Yanu Yanatawa goes to ground. Advantage, so it's a free, it's a free ball. Russell goes wide, Lamont is out there, and the ball will beat them all, and they'll be back for the advantage in the penalty. He certainly won't be taking the scrum after that last one. Billy Watt was clinging onto it. Side entry. Richie Vernon's skill off the back of that scrum, Andy, that last scrum. Just astonishing. It's a world-class piece of skill from number eight. Interesting one this going for the tap. Vernon. Russell. Maitland. Lamont running the line. Maitland's going for it himself. Just short. Desperate lunge. Arthur has set this up nicely. They get numbers now. Big overlap out wide and Bath have won the penalty. How vital could that prove? Francois Low, I think, on the floor. With Matt Garvey too, one of the very best in the business. Francois Low. What a time to come up with a good. What a game of rugby though. How close Sean Maitland must have been inches short of the lane, Finn Russell in had a goal. Do you know, I think it was Jonathan Joseph that put the final nail in that tackle on Maitland heading into the corner. The man whose defence is constantly questioned. Watched him all this season, he's defending fantastically well. Got to be in with a shout of playing for England. How close was Maitland then? Oh wow, so this is it. Look at Maitland. It's a missed tackle. 
Maguja. Look how close that is. That is that's qualification for the knockout stage right there. And then this is the turnover. In goes low. Look at that. Straight on, supporting his own body weight. You just. see his knees clear of the body just. If his shin is resting on something, it's a bath player. Win the line out, knock it out, home quarter final. It's basketball. It's there for Stringer. The quarterfinal for Bath. What a match. High drama. An incredibly tense finish. And Mike Ford's side have seen it through. Brave, brave Glasgow go down, but they've given it absolutely everything. Not the style, perhaps, that we might have expected from Bath, but given the opposition today, that is gritty, nuggety, and everything that it had to be. Just a fantastic game. High drama, of course, with the updates coming from France, too. Changing things. Glasgow were stubborn. They were aggressive. It looked like they had Bath's number for a good portion of this game. Suddenly, 50 or 60 minutes. Bath refused to give up. Eventually, the forward power told. The strength of that bench got them through. This was a fantastic... It wasn't cut loose champagne rugby we saw last week down in the south of France but it was proper competitive European rugby great game to watch it really was and credit credit Bath they, they had the they had the pressure up front they had the advantage up front they got the two penalty tries but credit to Glasgow as well who kept in the game and without any real platform specialist scrum time they were still what inches away there from Maitland and from Russell that we didn't quite see it's a gutsy performance but not quite good enough so relief no doubt the overwhelming emotion